most of the morbidity and mortality cases in Nigeria are caused by preventable infectious diseases, malnutrition and poverty. Many diseases that are long forgotten in developed countries are still killing many Nigerians, especially in the rural areas. I agree that um, some of the diseases that are in the neglected tropical diseases, you, know, you don't find them in the West again, in the developed countries. But on our part, we've tried to you know, reduce them to the minimum. Things like um, onchocerciasis, which is river blindness, we've been able to reduce the prevalence, that is, you know, the, um, the amount of people afflicted from, from a very high percentage of maybe about um, 60 to 70 down to uh, about 20 to 25 percent. Findings reveal that doctors and other health professionals in Nigeria are largely cut off from the revolution in global exchange of information, data, and technology in medicine and health. A few weeks ago, the first case of the influenza A, H1N1, otherwise known as swine flu, was reported in Nigeria of a nine-year-old American girl who resides in Lagos. General awareness, surveillance, performing medical checks and screening residents, including everyone who has had contact with the girl, has brought up fresh concerns about a possible spread. Also, pneumonia vaccination is yet to be part of the national program on immunization and thus the vaccines are way out of reach of the rural poor. This exposes more children to death by this preventable disease. Most of them cannot access treatment on time and this results in complications and then death. Problems associated with death in pneumonia arise as a result of complications that is from, and which also causes, comes about by delayed treatment. Nigeria's healthcare delivery has suffered many setbacks due to the absence of qualified personnel. Many Nigerian doctors prefer to practice abroad, while those at home often resort to strike actions to press home demands for better pay and especially working conditions. The situation has compelled government officials to seek medical attention for themselves in foreign lands. Despite the bite of poverty, Nigerians who require healthcare services often prefer to pay huge amounts at private hospitals rather than opt for what is largely seen as inadequate government health care. One of them is Pastor Yelwa Constantine in Gapweto, a retired police officer who was wounded in active service. He too has opted to receive treatment in a private hospital. If he, the healthcare delivery is working, I wouldn't be here. I was supposed to go to government and uh, receive my treatment as a retiree. But because that system is not working, and that was where we were looking for alternative. Doctors say progress in the healthcare sector has been slow and is not keeping pace with developments in other countries, and there are no adequate facilities for primary health care delivery. How will you put somebody to go and do primary health care in a village where, first of all, there is no light? Then you must, re you must, you must, re you must reward him. You must. You must give him the reason to want to be there, otherwise he will not be there. There should be incentive for doctors to go to the rural areas because a lot of patients that probably die from complications come from the rural areas. Taking adequate health care delivery to the rural population of Nigeria has been a major challenge over the years. Figures show over 70 percent of Nigeria's 150 million people resides in the rural areas. Nigerian leaders are already asking for interventions and partnerships to meet this challenge. Conditional grants from the MDG's office are being given to states to bring this essential service to the people. Much more efforts made with the state governments through the conditional grants to enhance their own programs to build their capacity. At the end of the day, that's where the people are. They're at the local government level, at the state level. Um, and so bridging the gap and strengthening and scaling up those investments um, with those uh, partners is what we've been doing over the last two years. The MDG's office is collaborating with various governmental establishments for the continuous capability improvement of health institutions, including hiring and training of health personnel. And while Nigerians wait for these grant plans to affect their health, here is free medical advice on staying clean and paying close attention to your personal health. Doctors are encouraging Nigerians to join the fight to combat diseases and achieve the Millennium Development Goals on health. Your health is much, much more your responsibility than another person's. 
Because if you keep your environment clean, you eat um, a balanced diet, you wash your hands before you, you, you eat, you don't defecate you know, all over the place. These are the attitudes or things that we should do to send diseases out of our environment. And we, on our part, we've been trying to do that through the states and local governments to educate the people at the community level. Breastfeeding has been found to reduce the in incidence of infection, respiratory infections. So I think all children should have the benefit of exclusive breastfeeding in the first six months of life. And thereafter, nutritious diet, should, complementary feeds should be introduced also. And another thing is um, to prevent overcrowding. Pneumonia is one of the diseases that occur in situations of overcrowding. So to prevent overcrowding, good ventilations, especially where the children sleep, and to avoid them sleeping with adults who have some type of respiratory infection. We encourage women to join women infected by HIV AIDS or women affected by HIV AIDS. We're encouraging them to. There are various support groups across the country. We are encouraging these women to join those support groups. And what we also do is that we provide we build the capacity of these support groups to support their members. We, we build their capacity in terms of like entrepreneurship development. And when we train them in skills acquisition, we also have a system where we are able to provide some seed grants, some take off money, you know, so that they can be able to take care of themselves, take care of their children, because the implication is that when the father dies, the mother is there. If the mother is not prepared or adequately catered for, it drops off on the children. The children can drop out of school. Far from shying away from its responsibilities, the Nigerian government is bringing up health sector policies aimed at promoting better health and providing more facilities in the primary health care centers in rural communities.